in order to promote the uh, the the budding of the flower. Um, it doesn't yield as well as a spring crop, but it's specifically designed to have been planted in the fall and it needs a freeze to promote um, the crop production. A spring crop, generally a better yield, and um, it doesn't require, you know, if, if it gets frozen it dies. So you have to plant it in spring when the temperatures are rising. Um, from my from the way I play my perspective is that planting a winter crop will protect the soil because <coughs> you have something with roots in the ground over the winter otherwise you want to be looking at putting down um, oilseed radish to protect the soil over the winter I believe there was, in the latest precision farming, speaking of uh, oilseed radish, there was a fix to how much nitrogen that adds to the soil. I do want to find out what they did to change yeah. soybeans because that was broken. Yeah, one time was actually. And I believe the, the farm's environmental score is now based on farmable land, not um, total land. So the problem, the problem originally was if you bought this field, the grass border around it counts towards the, the environmental score because you can't analyze the soil in it, you can't fertilize it you can't deal with the weeds in it etc etc um, it adversely affected your total score because the farm score is based on the score of each individual field versus the total area of the farm so even the yard of the farm was added to your total land area and you can't you know, you can't analyze the soil in your yard, you can't fertilize the, oil, the soil in your yard. So it was kind of a, well, that doesn't work too well. But um, apparently they've now changed that farm math to only use the total of growing area. So, you know, if you've got four fields of five acres each, you're now talking divided by 20 for your total score type of thing. Whereas before it was um, the total, um, you might have four fields at tw uh, five acres each, but then you've got your yard is another three acres. It was saying the score for 20 acres, each of your four fields divided by 23, so you would end up with a lower number. Um, Starbuck, thank you for the um, subscription. So that's all going to be... Anyway, that, you know, as, as we progress, that is something we're going to be learning about as we go. It's not something I have seriously scienced out to try and figure out how it all works it's just let's play the game and see what we can do I'm just going to run down this edge I'll probably Go both ways. But because of the angle we've been running the plough on this field, I'm going to start again from the bottom up ahead and come over this direction. So that uh, 
we're pushing the soil in the same direction each time. It doesn't really matter as far as farm sim is concerned. You're just plowing the dirt and it's all good. But the deal here is obviously in real life we are pushing the soil in that direction each time we run across the field and if I started pushing it that direction halfway across the field you're gonna have a huge ridge in the middle of the field where the soil was pushed from both directions but if you do it the other way you're going to end up with a big trough in the middle of the field where you've been pushing the soil to the outer edges of the field so you kind of want to rotate your plow in the same direction and pass <coughs> oh excuse me still have a sore throat so we need to keep fairly well lubricated And as we head into summer, it's probably more likely that we're going to have the younger kids come over on the Friday. So, every other Saturday will be a loud episode. With a studio audience who couldn't care less what I'm doing. This is the plow that comes with the cultivator, which is possibly why the offset doesn't work on it. Oh look, it's a bug eating bugs. But, uh, yeah. Mommy, did you know why um, bodies eat bugs? So, anyway. It's because birdies are small and only have small tummies. Anyway. So we do have a real time clock in the top left side, or top right. Happy to have that around still. But seriously, for the most part, most of my must-have mods are now part of the game. So things like Seasons, it's part of the game. I don't have to wait for, for the mod to come out. Um, the whole driving experience where I can now select Drive and Reverse um, in-game. We are missing the manure system. I do have... Um, this tractor is actually fitted with GPS, which is nice. Um, I don't know whether if you've got... Um, uh, what is it? Guidance steering mod. Um, whether every single um, contract tractor comes with GPS. Um, I really haven't been paying that much attention to it. But this one has it installed. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the um, the plow offset to work with this particular plow, so I'm guessing there's a little bit of a problem with the uh, the plow's um, technical definition. Obviously, its uh, its function and its description in the um, 
in the store is correct, but when we went with this, um, you can see, in spite of the fact I did auto width, it centered the tractor's path um, exact center of the working area. Well, obviously, if you look at the the plow, um, the working area is from barely to the right of the center line of the tractor to a long way to the left. So I couldn't get that fixed quickly. Um, I did try, but uh, it just this particular piece of equipment doesn't seem to work which is why I was thinking it may be that super fancy plow um, is it that one that obviously if you've got the plow and the um, the cultivar or the paco mat um, active on it then it's center line the working area is center line. Um, but, uh, and I, I, and I found that even back in Farm Sim 17, there were a couple of pieces of equipment that auto width just didn't work. Um, either, it should, you know, the, the, the technical working width of the piece of equipment was zero, that, um, that uh, GPS looked at or it was just off um, I know um, you know Giants tends to get the technical information on their equipment correct but like I said with the packer mat on this if I had that on this then obviously the working width is center line on the tractor um, it's just that you're cultivating the left side and you're plowing the right side but when you flip it you just move the tractor you know two steps to the right and it'll keep going um, uh, anyway it's it's a thing I could possibly have sat at the start of the field and um, manually adjusted the offset until the blue lines coincided with the operating width of the plough. But, yeah, we, obviously we'll see how that goes. In all likelihood I will have my smallest tractor fitted with GPS so that we can do, um, say, spraying a crop like the one directly ahead of us where there is... Actually, I don't need to. No, I'll take that back. Um, because we're going to have, because we have precision farming running, we're going to be able to see where we've been with the sprayer and everything else. So having a, a small tractor with GPS on it, not as critical as, you know, base game GPS or base game contracting to spray fields. But we will be paying for things like, uh, what's it, crop detectors and what have you. So we can do things on the field with the sprayers to finally adjust how much um, fertilizer we add to the field to get the, the most ideal. Um, nitrogen levels. But, uh, that's a future thing. Big tractors, I will probably put GPS because, in the grand scale of their cost, you know, you're paying three hundred thousand for the for a tractor, and it's another two percent to um, put GPS on it. Yeah, I might as well and. For things like ploughing, cultivating, seeding, um, sometimes it is a little bit easier to use GPS in those situations. Tractors that I use for 
purely for karting or general you know, horse work. Um, I'm not going to spend 15000 just to uh, stick GPS on them. And then the big tractor's probably not going to put crop sensors on them or anything like that because frankly, don't need it. They're not going to be fertilizing fields. <coughs> they may be slurry spreading, but I think the slurry spreading attachment is attached to the slurry spreader. We're going to, as I said, we're going to investigate all these things and find out what's what now. Looks like I'm missing some bits along here. The other field was a lot easier because the farmer had lined it before we got out to it. Um, meanwhile, oh, well, we've got that one to claim. We're forty percent. Didn't see a message yet. And it seems, as I said, this seems to be a nice map. Um, the animal husbandries are huge, as I said earlier. So we're not going to be, yeah. Hey, look, I've got a cow barn. It takes seven hundred cows. Let's go and buy seven hundred cows. We'll buy twenty and uh, let the barn fill itself. I think, for the most part. All of the cow sheds, however, are um, auto feeder, so most ideal they are um, dairy, or they're they they you know, they're they're designed for dairy cattle, not for beef cattle. Um, the thing I've you know, you don't have to feed your beef cattle TMR. It just increases the amount of slurry they create. But they hold their value just on hay. Um, with dairy cattle, you must feed them TMR or you don't get milk from them. But since these are auto feeder sheds, um, you know, the robot will feed them. So we might as well take advantage of it. The difference between beef and uh, dairy cattle is beef cattle gain value every month until 36th month and then they start losing value. Dairy cattle only gain value until the 24th month they then hold solid for the next 12 and then they start losing value after 36 <coughs> but dairy cattle over time make more money because they produce the milk and after about I think it want to say six months producing milk their total sale value plus milk uh, produced value is higher than the beef cattle but the beef cattle don't need TMR so you don't need to go out and purchase mixers and all the rest of the stuff now, we've never done beef cattle actually I mean on a stream we've since law folds we've not done any cattle we just did sheep last time um, but it does seem from a livestock point of view, um, you want to sell your animals when they're 36 months old. I don't know if there's any other penalty, but they start losing value. Um, so feed them three years and sell them. Um, it does make it a little bit awkward for cattle because, because of their breeding cycle. If you sell a cow at 36 months it will have had one child if you sell it at 37 months it'll have two so you effectively you double if you wait till the 37th month you doubled the number of cattle you have 
um, in that three year period but it's worth a little bit less but is one extra baby worth the drop in value and that may be um, a positive argument in let's delay selling them but it does mean I think if I remember my math correctly you have cows for three years and a month and it produces two cattle which obviously you then sell the one and in, you know, if, you, if your original holding was 10 cows you now have 20 cows and if you do that again you will have 40 cows and then 80 cows etc etc um, but for the first 18 months cows are not um, I think 12 months they start producing milk if they're dairy and at 18 months gestation starts so 27 months they have their first something like that But anyway, that's that's cow sheep. I haven't looked at much in the way of breeding, and pigs I haven't looked at at all for Farm Sim 22. So that's going to be a little bit of a learning process as well. But, uh, once we've completed this we'll drive back to the store because that's a good place to be I want to try and, and uh, not to uh, beam around the map um, so much in this series so if I can drive there we drive there um, I do believe uh, with the Capota DLC we're going to get um, multi-passenger um, equipment so if I played multiplayer you can give your friends a ride around the map but um, we'll probably have a, a runabout of some description whether that be a truck or a gator or whatever and at least with Farm Sim 20 do, you can stick something on a worker and send it um, to an area of the map. So if I wanted, you know, I'm going to set off a worker here, I could send a truck to the bit to the entrance of the field. I could put this on a worker, jump out and go and jump in the truck and go and do stuff. <coughs> so that's what we're going to try and do this series. I'll probably forget. And still tab between the vehicles but we'll try not to um, now obviously actually I've, oh come on keep going uh, one of the things I've not looked at we have a 200,000 loan so we can actually borrow another 300,000 so not not too much of a concern I would say the other th what is that? That's oh, taking silage bales. Oh, go back. Now, one of the things I did discover on Carmsden was um, I did a silage contract, which really didn't seem to be that big, but the delivery point was to the BGA. And um, I think I ended up, because of the size of the fields, I say it didn't appear to be very big, but because of the field size, we produced 120-ish bales. Might have been more than that. Um, I was using the Vicon Fast Baler, so um, it was baled and wrapped as you go, but... The problem with the fast baler is it limits you. If you've got big windrows, it seriously slows down the uh, 
the baler because it's trying to time it so that you're dropping the wrapped bale by the time the next bale is finished and ready to feed into the wrapper. Um, so, you know, there, there's a little bit of shenanigans going on with tractor speed and there's nothing you can do to speed it up. But it's, it's quite handy because you just drive. You don't have to worry about stopping in a round baler to drop off bales. But the bales are limited to 125 centimetres. They're the smallest bales. So you end up producing lots of them. But as I said, you know, we produced about 120 bales. Well, I took a the Anderson bale carrier, which can carry 24 bales, I think. And the first 18... Um, the delivery part of the contract was complete. Um, and there's still, you know, another 90 odd bales on the field. So I ended up inheriting all of those bales with contracts, um, silage bales, um, ferment immediately. So you are selling silage bales, but any that are left over are fully silage bales that you can, you don't have to stick them somewhere nice and let them ferment for a couple of days before they stop being wrapped grass and so from that one contract I made something like £80,000 um, which is crazy um, now I'm not sure the same is true delivering silage bales to the farmers market because the farmers market doesn't have a cap um, with the BGA, you can, I think you can deliver about 50,000 litres and then it's reached its cap. And so that's all it took to complete the contract was to fill the BGA to capacity, which was kind of weird. Um, but that could have been unique to Carmston and the way that's set up. I don't know. So it might be worth doing that bailing contract just to see um, how it works on this map. Now I think right now I need to take a very quick buyer break. So I'm going to stick this on a worker. I will be back in a couple of minutes.